So my bloody league, boys, way above my pay grade. <laughs> so yeah, as I say, I'm here to uh, broke a piece, but that is way, way above my pay grade. <laughs> What's happening guys, you're right, um, it's just gone so fucking mad the last few days, I can't, can't keep up. So I'm splitting these lot into two divisions, right, so Premier League lineup is going to be Sean Atwood, James English, Darren G, Billy Moore, Decker, uh, Marvin Herbert, uh, yeah, and that's it. They're going to be in the Premier League, okay. The championship then, we're going to have uh, Brian Cockrell, Ben Hatchett, Fighting Trolls, um, and Living in London. And then the first division then is going to be Liam Ditchie, Dr. Rackpole, Uncle K, and John Morris. Right, that'll mean I can just make videos on certain leagues, because it's just, just all... It's freaking me out now, to be honest. I made I started doing this channel for a laugh. I thought I'd do it properly, I'll put a bit of research in, a bit of effort. It's driving me mad. So what's happening? Right, now Decker has been having this two years of grief with a load of people. He's uh pinpointed who some of them are. This is his words, not mine. Well not his exact words, but I'm paraphrasing. He's pinpointed who his trolls are. They've been causing him all sorts of mischief, involving his family, etc., etc. He's had enough. He wants to go and have a square go with them. Um, he started saying who they are now as part of his expose. Uh, you know, being released bit by bit. Got to the point this week where he just he just wants to fucking fight people now. So he wants to fight the lad Christie. And I think he also wants to fight Gary Furby as well, um, who he's fought in the past in the ring. And now, uh, tonight, um, Mr. Joyce has got involved, who is going to be Decker's uh, fair, what do they call it, fair play man. So Decker's taking Mr. Joyce uh, when he goes for this fight. Mr. Joyce is going to be his fair play man, and apparently this other guy, Christy, uh, Paul Venice has offered to be his fair play man. Paul's not really involved in all this, but he's just he's willing to act like a sort of a ref, I suppose, a second ref. I like that Paul Venice actually. I've just started watching his channel. He's uh, you know, in recovery from addiction, like my good self. Uh, talks a lot of sense, so I'll be keeping an eye on his channel. Um, so yeah, so it's all being arranged now, as you've probably seen in the videos. Um, the guy Christie's like now saying, I don't want to have a fight anymore. This is out of hand. Plus, um, you've got a restraining order against me. So I'm not allowed to come and see you. Uh, but then he said he was going to split his wig if he did see him. So basically, you've just got all these, these, uh, these really tough guys. <laughs> I don't know how to say it without swearing. You've got all these really tough guys arranging fights on YouTube, and uh, and if it does go off, it's going to be f flipping nasty. Because um, you've got some proper square go merchants. So all that's been going on, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the last video, Dad has talked about his mental health issues as well. You know, I got my own, so as I said, I'm not mocking, not here to judge. Not here to uh, take sides. I'm just here to report and, as I say, offer um, a safe zone for people to discuss all these things going on and, if possible, to broker peace. You know, I'm not anonymous. I'm not hiding. It's easy to find me, you know. If anybody wanted to find me, it's not hard, is it? You know, I'm not exactly hiding who I am, where I am. Which is good because it makes me accountable for what I say, uh, which is a lot of the problem with a lot of this stuff going on. So basically, you know, Decker and his boys, or his, his square go man, his fair play man, his fair play man for the square go, Mr. Joyce, they've said, right, bang, you know, all of a sudden, Decker's sort of being shown some support. Uh, it's probably already there, but it's become public now that the support he's got, 
which might maybe a little bit intimidating for the other the other half. And uh, yeah, so so out of uh, so out of my bloody league, boys, way above my pay grade. <laughs> so yeah, as I say, I'm here to uh, broke a piece, but that is way way above my pay grade. Now, what else have been going on? Been reporting on Mr. Atwood and uh, Mr. G. They had a little falling out, which I sort of gave my analysis of it in the last video. Um, and then uh, Mr. G made a video today, sort of offering a sort of a bit of an olive branch, really. And Mr. Atwood came back, sort of, you know, extending the hand of friendship, really. So I'm hopeful that they can move over what I did describe as uh, a storm in a teacup, I think. And my advice to Mr. G was to uh, go to put a little bit of trust in someone. And I think that's what he needs. He needs Mr. Atwood in his corner. Because what you'll notice with a lot of these podcasters, right? Like, uh, for example, myself, yeah? I'm what has been termed by a lot of people as like a boomer, I think they call it. I don't know anything about technology. Oh, I got my phone. I talk on my phone. I send this video to my mate. And then he puts the laughing policeman bit and does a little bit of editing. Do you know what I mean? Because I say, I don't know how to do that sort of stuff. You know, it's, uh, it's not what I'm good at, you know. I'm a fighting man. <laughs> no, I'm not really good at that either. Um, but it's not what I do. And a lot of these channels have now got a little bit of, uh, you know, they've got some experts involved production-wise. And a lot of people haven't. Do you know what I mean? Um, so this is what's going on. Like, what's his name? English. You know, apparently a lot of money was pumped in, but the production values have gone up. And uh, same as Sean Atwood, you know, he knows what he's doing on that front. Uh, I don't think there's anybody else can really compete with those two on that, on that, uh, on that, you know, on the production values. But I think uh, it's what Mr. G's lacking. I think he's potentially got the content. He just needs a better structure. Uh, he probably needs a bit of assistance. With, you know, filming, editing and all that other stuff. His lives, a couple of weeks ago, he was banging the lives out. It was just hilarious. You know, the, the night of the the singing and all that, you know, the, uh, the straights night. It was just genuinely funny stuff, you know. So it's good to see that they've sort of, you know, made some sort of peace. It's been going bad down in the, down in the lower leagues in fighting trolls' uh, lives. Really weird. He was supposed to go on with... Uh, Dr. Rackpole, who describes himself as the King of London or something. I don't know much about him, I've only seen little snippets of him. But he was supposed to go on a live with uh, Fighting Trolls. And then Fighting Trolls then shot off somewhere um, to arrange a bit of work, apparently. But uh, he didn't tell Dr. Rackpole. He wasn't happy. Next night then, uh, Paul came on, explained himself. Apparently he'd had a few stellars. Um, sort of forgot what his plans were for the night. Got a bit waylaid after going in a Porsche and uh, going to arrange a bit of work. Um, so his live the following night was a sort of explanation of that, and it was uh, just at a carnage, to be honest with you. Uh, entertaining. No, Uncle K was in there, which I hadn't realised. He was a guy that I saw years ago in a documentary about uh, pirate radio. Thought I recognised him. Well, I've seen him lately. And he, he was like having a run in with living in London, who has disappeared off the scene for about two and a half weeks now. Um, maybe, maybe just he's seen sense, you know. Maybe he's being frightened off, warmed off, or maybe he's just thought, "Fuck this shit. This is just mental." Um, yeah. So that live was just bizarre. And then later on in the live, um, I'm again too, I may be getting two nights mixed up, but it's, it's going off for days. Later on in the live, then was a guy, Plastic Paddy, is it? America guy. And he was on chatting to Uncle K about uh, uh, MMA and UFC and all that. And they were having quite an interesting chat. And then Paul was in the background on his phone trying to find out who'd hacked his PayPal. And um, all of a sudden, then Liam Ditchie comes on, 
And do you know what he was doing? He was buying a homeless guy some onion rings. You know, fair play. You know what I mean? Fair play. And the guy said a poem and all that, this homeless guy. Liam bought him some onion rings and uh, he tried to get the bloke in the shop to buy him some chips, but he wouldn't. So I think Liam may have actually covered the chips as well, which I thought was a brilliant gesture. Bringing him on alive to show everybody, look, this guy's homeless. I'm going to buy him some onion rings. And then on his own channel tonight, he's cut out that little bit and put it out as his own video saying, must watch. Liam Ditchie buys a homeless guy some onion rings. So anyway, you've got to take your hat off credit where it's due, isn't it? Um, yeah, I started watching a few. I think these are old ones, old videos of John Morris and fighting trolls falling out. But that's a rabbit hole that I'm reluctant to go down, you know? Ben Hatchett, he's uh, sort of appeared back on the scene. I think he's got a few fights coming up, I think. Um, didn't know too much about him. Uh, but I'm going to start watching some of his, like his original video, I think, on James English. Now, get his backstory first. Obviously, I know bits and bobs of it, but maybe we could talk about him more. Uh, yeah, but that's it. It's It's been going off. I watched a little bit of Billy Bo. I tell you what I watched today, James English, uh, interviewing that sort of old school Everton football hooligan. Sorry, I can't remember his name. Um... I watched all the podcasts and I have actually got his book. I bought his book years ago. Oh, God, what's his name? Sorry, mate, I just can't remember it. But that was good. That's the thing with James English. He, I think he drops little hand grenades around the place like Paul Scholes. And uh, and then he goes off and just carries on with his work. Because James English is a very good interviewer, you know. Regardless of all the shenanigans that go on between these lads, um, James English is a very good interviewer because he's able to sit back and let the people talk. Um, and there's one or two who could learn from that. Uh, yeah, I watched a bit of Billy Moore earlier. He's good as well. I do like him, but I haven't, I haven't watched him lately. So yeah, those are the divisions. I did write down all the, the sub sub counts, but there's not much point reading them out, is there? You know, these sub, what I did notice, you look at people's, how many subs they got, and you look how many views they get, and it's like, those sub, sub count, the subtotals don't count for much today, to be honest with you. Um, just want to finish with a big shout out to three of my favourite channels now. We'll cover this sort of stuff, you know, obviously I'm more of a serious uh, analysis of it, uh, impartial, and you know, I like to sort of, dip in, delve in to try and establish, you know, I just try and work out what's going on. But these lads go, you know, go at it from a different angle and just want to say, uh, yeah, shout out to Exposure TV who cropped up in that live. That was funny. Because there's obviously some sort of problem between Exposure TV and Uncle K because they were just shouting and screaming at each other. Um, not sure what the root of that issue is. And also your favourite demon, that's a good little channel progressing there. I like that guy. He uh, sort of does like 50 minute breakdowns of some of these characters. And I've watched a few of those. So he's definitely one to watch. And uh, obviously your standard COVID TV. It's quality as well. You know, because sometimes uh, this stuff gets a bit serious, doesn't it? You know, with all these square goes and talks of trolls and all the trials and tribulations of mental health that us, uh, us lads are dealing with in this day and age and addiction and bloody all the drama being going on out of our hands, you know, governmentally speaking and, you know, all the bloody stuff of the climate and uh, everybody arguing with everybody and, you know. So uh, sometimes it's just nice to take your foot off the gas, you know. With a bit of exposure TV here. Yeah. yeah, you gotta love them. But as I say, guys, give peace a chance, man. I think I would say that earlier. If everybody just helped each other out, all right, maybe a few would drop off because they wouldn't have any content left. But the Top Guns, you know, he likes of Atwood, English, myself. You know, there's, there's plenty in this pie to go around, lads. See you next time.